We've had several stories of individuals who've pursued the path of self-inquiry, or at least they've pursued the practice of self-inquiry. The results have been described. And we've just come to the end of the contemplation of Pralada. Again, it's the story of somebody who's practiced self-inquiry and reap the fruits of it. There's a pattern. First of all, appreciating that self-inquiry is the method by which you can realize the truth, realize what's essentially going on. And then there seems to be a period of assimilation whereby this person, this individual, is happy to rest in the fruits of self-inquiry. It's almost like a period of assimilation, of coming to terms with this. But then what happens is they get on and they go about their business. They get on with engaging in worldly activity. And the story of Pralada has put the practice of self-inquiry into a, a mythic cosmic context. Because Pralad is the son of the demon king and he's become a devotee of Vishnu who is the is one of the supreme gods of Hinduism. Vishnu is the preserver who maintains cosmic order. We've had quite an extensive section on Pralad's contemplation. The sister continued. After thus contemplating, Pralad entered into the state in which there is, there is no mental modification at all, but where there is supreme bliss, undisturbed by the movement of thought. He sat where he was like a statue. So there's no mental modification. In other words, Pralad sitting there in perfect contentment. He's not, think, he's not wondering what's happening next door or what his children is, are up to, or what the state of the kingdom is like, or anything like that. There's nothing going on. He's not being hijacked from his own awareness. And he's sitting there in supreme bliss, which I suggest we can understand as what was described in the previous chapter as a state of utter equilibrium and of supreme peace. A very long time passed in this manner. The demons tried their best to disturb him. They could not. A thousand years went by. The demons concluded that he was dead. Anarchy prevailed in the netherworld. Hiranya Kashipu was dead, and his son remained dead to the world. I think Hiranya Kashipu was killed in the war against the gods. No one else ascended the throne. The demons roamed the country freely guided solely by their whims and fancies. There was utter disorder and the strong overpowered the weak. Even as in the ocean, the big fish swallow the small ones. In the meantime, the protector of the universe, Lord Vishnu, who was reclining on his serpent couch in the ocean of milk, contemplated the state of the universe. In his own mind, he saw the heaven and the earth and satisfied himself that everything was in order in those regions. Then he saw the state of the netherworld. He perceived that Prahlad was deeply immersed in the transcendental state of consciousness. Freed from harassment by the demons, the gods in heaven enjoyed a runaway prosperity. So maybe that's not such a good thing. Seeing this, Lord Vishnu thought, since Prahlad is immersed in the transcendental state of consciousness, the leaderless demons have lost their power. In the absence of a threat from the demons, the gods in heaven have nothing to fear, and hence nothing to hate. If they have nothing to fear or hate, they will soon rise to the transcendental state of consciousness beyond the pairs of opposites and attain liberation. I said before that this term transcendental state of consciousness is a little bit misleading. The supreme state is actually a, the state of consciousness. It is awareness of awareness. 
So in that, in a sense, it does transcend everything, but only because it is simply consciousness. It's not a higher state of consciousness. So we need to be careful about that way of thinking. So we don't want the gods to all become liberated. Then the earthlings will find religious rites to be meaningless since there are no gods to propitiate. Well, the gods got enlightened then. Um, traditional religion is in for a hard time. This universe, which ought to exist till the natural cosmic dissolution, will thus abruptly cease to be. Yeah, I just had this interesting notion pop into my head. Perhaps that's, this is why the gods are no longer worshipped. Because they've all got liberated. So there's no point in worshipping them anymore. So maybe something did go wrong. Maybe the gods and the demons, maybe they all got liberated eventually. This universe which ought to exist till the natural cosmic dissolution will thus abruptly cease to be. I do not see any good in this. Hence I think that the demons should continue to live as demons. If the demons function as the enemies of the gods, religious and righteous actions shall prevail in this creation. And thus will this con creation continue to exist and flourish, not otherwise. So it's Vishnu's concern to maintain some kind of cosmic order, some kind of balance, so that things carry on. Hence, I shall presently go to the netherworld and re-establish it as it should be. If Prahlad shows no interest in winning that realm, I shall appoint someone else in his place. Surely this is the last incarnation of Prahlad, and he shall live in this embodiment till the end of this world cycle. Such is the world order. Hence I shall go to the netherworld and roar to awaken Prahlad. I shall persuade him to rule the realm whilst enjoying the consciousness of liberation. Thus shall I be able to sustain this creation till its natural dissolution.